Okay. Um, the minutes of the meeting of the Community Planning Partnership Board for the 18th of February. Um, the only um, issue I had with them, and it might be picked up um, because it's under the emerging uh, issues, was um, at the end of the meeting, uh, I did um, uh, ask if we could have a, an update to the Community Planning um, Partnership Board um, on the three work streams that were being uh, carried out, yes. I think, by, by, by the police PCAVs and the, and the council um, on raising awareness, third party reporting um, and raising, uh, uh, sorry, training and awareness raising yeah. amongst staff, third party reporting uh, and public um, awareness raising campaign uh, of, of, of hate crime uh, to, to a future board meeting. Um, so if we can add that in, I'd certainly be content with the, uh, the, the minutes, but as I say, we may be picking it up with um, hate crime as an emerging issue uh, later on in the agenda. Yeah, I'm happy to agree with the previous. Yeah. That's right, okay, Councillor. Thanks, that's Dave. One of the strategic um, issues item. So. Okay. Um, we've got the final draft of the uh, local outcome um, improvement plan. Um, Dave, can you tell me who's introducing that? Um, Lee's going to give a short um, PowerPoint, and then there's a few questions at the end of that for discussion and for board to consider. We can hand over to Lee then, thank you. Thanks both. Uh, Councillor Barrett, I've forwarded you a copy of the, the short briefing note I had for Murray. It should be in your inbox and on your teams if you wish to refer to that, it might help. Um, for the the, 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 the the future items, there's a couple of points on there. Um, but yeah, thanks very much for, uh, for, for passing over. I'll just share my screen with you. I have a f um, just five or six slides to help with the discussion. <clears throat> Here we go. Yeah, so four key points to cover this morning, uh, some of which we touched on at the last board meeting in February, but I think bear repeating uh, just now, those being the, the current position with the, the LIPE, the information gaps that remain, um, our assessment of progress to date in terms of finalising the document, and as David referred to, some key questions at the end um, to start a conversation and to reflect on as we move towards finalising the document in time for the next board meeting in June. So moving slides on. Um, but I think first it's worth reminding ourselves, and again, this was mentioned at the, the previous board meeting, uh, what the, the Best Value Assurance Report said about community planning in Perth and Ken Ross and in 2019. So I've laid out some of the key points there. Uh, and in summary, there were the, the, the auditors found that there were improvements that we could make around our effectiveness uh, collectively as a community planning partnership, the leadership of the community planning partnership being shared across members, our impact on the outcomes that we've identified and how we evidence that, how communities are involved in setting priorities and making decisions, and the overall governance of the community planning partnership um, from the, the, the board at a very strategic level down to our local action partnerships at a very local level. So in terms of the, the, the current position, again, as mentioned, um, in the February meeting, the LIPE itself has to really meet three key tests. It has to demonstrate an understanding of our communities. It has to identify priorities and desired outcomes for Perth and Kinross on the basis of that understanding and agree the necessary actions and resources that we need in order to, to make the impact that we wish to make. Um, the first two points are more or less completed. There's still chances, uh, opportunities to add or change that as, as we see fit, but partners seem relatively content with that. And it's the third point that's remaining uh, kind of a work in progress, if I can call it that. So in terms of that kind of missing information, the action plan remains the key focus, and we're looking for the smart partnership actions which impact on our strategic priorities. Uh, so there are some gaps remaining around some of these actions, specifically around how partners are involved the resources that are either available or needed to deliver these actions, how we will uh, assess the impact or what our indicators of success are, and what the timescales are, bearing in mind that we've agreed that this initial light will be for a 12-month period. Um, so effectively putting out a final call for this information and input from partners, and if we can have that by the 6th of May, which is two weeks today, that gives us sufficient time to turn around the final document and have it shared before um, we look to finalise the following month. So 
Moving on into the assessment of progress, um, as mentioned, there are two of the three requirements have effectively been met in terms of what the LOIP needs to do. We recognise there's competing requirements and, and duties which have resulted in challenges in securing the input that we've been looking for. But as a result of that, some gaps remain about the delivery of the, the proposed actions and the resource commitments. And reflecting on the, the best value information that I outlined in the, the first slide, I think the impact and effectiveness of the CPP will be judged on how we then deliver the LOIP once we've approved the document itself. We are developing a performance framework as part of that LOIP and a series of indicators, and that will provide our evidence of impact as we go forward. Um, I think it's fair to say that over the last few months, a uh, couple of years, the board has taken on a more strategic role and our agenda is less focused on operational updates and more about um, future strategy and where we want to focus our time. Um, and the CPP collectively will need to consider um, our, our governance and community in, input into uh, decision making and priority setting as you move forward. So lastly, kind of to start the conversation, to start um, a bit of discussion, here are some of the key questions for board members to reflect on um, as we move toward finalising the document in June and then moving on to the delivery phase. So I won't go through them in detail. Um, I'm happy to leave them up there um, if, if that aids conversation or I can uh, pop them down and then uh, copy and paste the text into the, the chat function at the side so people can see each other and have a conversation at the same time. But also happy to take any questions or, or points of clarity if anybody has any. Thanks. Lee, thanks um, very much for that. I think I forgot to say in the um, the welcome, um, if people can use the chat function to indicate if they want to ask a question or um, 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 make a contribution, that would be a contribution or a comment, that would be great. Um, in terms of being confident that the um, actions we've identified are, are deliverable and, and have a positive impact, um, I also wondered whether we'd considered, because it is a, a kind of rapidly um, moving um, situation or rapidly deteriorating situation with regard to things like um, poverty and and fuel poverty, uh, Lee. Um, and I, I, I wondered, and you know, I, I don't want to, to to be constantly revising the strategic con uh, context, um, but I think in terms of the uh, the action plan, you know, are there going to be um, more urgent actions that we need to identify to address, you know, the the cost and uh, rising cost in energy and food, um, and and you know, the the, the time scale set again with the the, the energy prices. Um, set to rise again following the removal of the energy cap um, last month or this month uh, again in 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 October time. And I, I'm 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 not sure we get the the, the answers necessarily this time, but I, I I just wondered whether there was things that we needed to 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 look at. I think Dave, you had your hand up there. Yeah, thanks. I mean, it, it, it I suppose it is an issue of us producing the life. Is that trying to keep pace? With with um, as as things change and as new emerging issues, you know the priorities I think that we've got in terms of poverty, employability, mental and physical well-being I think are still still right. Um, I guess we are dependent on um, partners and, and, and services um, you know, telling us what partnership actions that we need to take that only the partnership can take to alleviate. The impacts of some of the things that you've you've talked about, but um, certainly we, you know we, we've got, as Lee said, we've got two weeks. If there are other things that are happening, um, then we can put them in. But um, you know we, we do need to. I suppose a couple of one we we need to finish the document and get it that signed off and get into implementation. But also we do want it to be a live document. Um, you know, it, and we do need to be updating it throughout the year as 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 things change. So. Um, yeah, we would certainly welcome any further input around the uh, child poverty and fuel poverty and food poverty issues. And Lee, you've got your hand up. Thanks, Peter. Yeah, just um, uh, following up on, on David's last point there about um, uh, kind of a, a being a, a live document. Absolutely. And there are, because this is very much a moving feast and very much a current issue. So as more information emerges, or new ideas come forward, then absolutely the document should change to reflect that. Um, there are a couple of bits of work that I'm aware of. One is um, the beginning of June, there is a, a child poverty conference, which our colleagues with the Child Poverty Working Group are leading on, and that will no doubt 
um, sort of with some additional um, actions that the partnership may wish to to, to take on. Um, and the local housing strategy is also now beginning the, the review process and there's a couple of significant events coming up in the next few weeks and part of that will involve um, a, a, an update of the fuel poverty um, strategy that the, the the council has as part of that housing work and no doubt again there will be some bits and pieces coming out of those that we can then pick up and add to the LIPE. Thanks. Okay, that's really helpful. Thanks for that, Lee. So we've can I can I, can I, sorry, hand up? I don't know if you saw that I had my hand up there. I didn't clear, sorry, no. Uh just probably to to reiterate what Lee has said there, I had a wee look uh, at the LOIP again last night and picked up and have, have fed back to Lee in terms of a bit more detail in terms of um, the cost of living crisis. And I think they need to emphasise that a little bit more. And as Lee has just described, we have got a, a child poverty event and indeed local housing strategy uh, development session in two weeks time, which will pick up on both child poverty activities and indeed some of the fuel poverty. So uh, I gave a commitment to Lee, Lee last night in the email that I'll pick up on a couple of these points with him just to think strengthen that area within the lot. Hey, thanks for that, Claire. Do we have any other reflections on the key questions that Lee has posed at the end of his presentation? Uh, I think she, Sheen has got a Sheena. Um, a Devlin. Thank you very much, Councillor Barrett. Lee, it was just a, a general question um, when I was looking at the... Sorry, I'm just scrolling back up now. Page 23 of 48. The three bullet points at the top, the second one talks about the, the data sharing and the need to have appropriate data to inform decision making. Um, and that's all outlined there. And I just wondered how how will that be actioned and checked through the LOIP? So forgive me because I, I was just looking through the LOIP to see if there were specific actions in there relating to that. Or, or is it just something that we will pick up and, and work on? Or is it something that there's a, a targeted focus on looking at getting new and better data sharing agreements in place between key members of the CPP, for example? Thanks. I can pick that up if you want, Lee. I mean, I Thanks, think it's, it's, yeah, sorry, Sheena, it's not. No, it's, it's probably more the latter than the former, I think. Um, you know, some of those enabling actions, if you like, were, were kind of key learning points from our joined up response to COVID and particularly around um, two sisters. And actually what worked well there and what worked well was the data sharing and being able to identify uh, vulnerable families and, and where they were quite, quite quickly across different services. You know, we've not got that cracked because um, there isn't a kind of data warehouse on get into that tech technical talk at the moment but I think it, you know it's something that as a partnership um, we should be looking at sharing that information about actually who are the who are the people most in need and how do we work with them rather than as um, you know separately trying to chase people around and, and support them and, and not making the best use of our um, resources so ladies anything you want to add to that it was really, really a minor point, David, but from a kind of responsibility perspective, Sheena, the, 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 we've always come at this from the, the perspective that the enabling actions, as they're titled, there would be ones that the executive officer group would uh, take forward and work on as part of the delivery of the LOIP. Um, so there'd be a collective responsibility amongst the partners that sit around that table. OK, thanks. So, Lee, is that, ref is that formally reflected anywhere? The, the reason I'm asking this is that there, there's a very obvious example where um, that there's we're we're clear that we are not yet able to do as as well as we would like to do in encouraging the uptake of uh, two year olds and their entitlement around their free places um, at, at nursery, and a big part of that has been the 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 lack of information that we've been able to get from DWP. Now we are now working on that nationally 
to be able to get information so that we know who we should be targeting rather than kind of straw in the wind approach. So if that is something that the executive officer team have taken on, do we have that formally noted somewhere and will we be able to, to monitor how we're doing that? Because I do think that that data sharing information is absolutely critical for, for all the reasons you've just articulated. Thanks. Uh, the Thanks. short answer, I'm sorry. No, no, honey, Goldie. I was going to say that the short answer is not formally no, Sheena. It's, it'll be within the notes of previous meetings. Um, to be honest, that the focus is and remains being actually getting the document itself signed off, um, which has been one task, and then we'll get on with the, the delivery element. But certainly there was strong support from the initial short life working group for these actions to be included and um, a general kind of agreement that the executive officer group would be the natural place for that to be taken forward. OK, thank you, Lee. Hey, Thomas. Um, th thank you, Peter. Um, I, I had uh, three questions, if I may, please. Uh, the first, uh, going back to, to, to page 23, where Rashina had just referenced, but picking up on the point there around about the local community planning, and then the subsequent page, page 24, under the second bullet point, which talks about locality partnership working. Um, I, I, I know there's been a couple of conversations with colleagues inside council uh, and with others uh, about the range of different initiatives and different ways in which uh, we are looking to engage and whether it's through lo local area partnerships. I know of the community action planning work that's being done in a number of communities. We've got the Perth and can also offer pilots. Uh, I, I just wonder whether or not round about the enabling actions, uh, we need to say something stronger round about looking to review the mechanisms for engaging uh, across uh, the, the whole of Perth and can Ross uh, and, and looking to try and whether it's rationalise or consolidate or, or, or certainly kind of take a view on whether or not the various initiatives and structures are operating as effectively as they can. Uh, I, I certainly think personally that there's a question mark for me uh, about whether or not what we've got the right model across uh, the area. So I, I would personally like to see something strengthened in that area. That would be my first comment. Uh, Peter, I'm happy to pause there before Ask him a second question. I can, yeah, I, I, um, I agree. It's a very, it's a very complex um, landscape, and, and it, it, you know, last few years it's probably got more complex. We had local action partnerships. Um, there has always been development trusts in some areas with their own plans. Um, then we've had the uh, the leader led work, which again has, has, has produced some other community plans in local areas. And now people are uh, you know, trying to work out where place plans sit with this. And um, you know, we are at risk of, of, of trying to service lots of different plans and trying to make sense of it without actually getting into the delivery and trying to improve things. So I think, yeah, we can certainly try and set that out and articulate that and, and um, I think about how we make a bit more sense of the world without us kind of being the you know we, we can't necessarily police that but there's got to be a way of trying to get communities facing in the same direction a little bit more and, uh, and just getting behind some of those plans and putting our resources in the right place so yeah we, we can uh, we can improve that section peter if i if i, if I may come back in yep. I, I, don't, I don't think it's just for me about looking at what the what the structures are it's also looking at how we agree where we commit resources um, because we know there's the community investment fund or a common good funds um, that are um, supported via the council uh, and there will be other supports from partners uh, and I think that becomes confusing um, for communities uh, in terms of how to access funds but also I think uh, it doesn't give clarity to communities on how we as partners are prepared to commit to particular structures, initiatives, groups, rather than trying to spread right across the, the kind of range of different things that are there. So uh, I would certainly encourage an action that look to bring something back, um, whether it's through this process or uh, just the work within council and working with partners on on reviewing and looking at proposals for, for trying to improve that. Lee, you've got your hand up. Is that in response to? Right. Yeah, thanks, Peter. David covered most of this, but the only point I was going to make was um, 
as well as looking at it from the, the, the community perspective in terms of the, the various initiatives that communities are leading on themselves, I think we sometimes um, add an extra layer of complication by having a variety of different public services, not just the council, but sometimes it's different services within the council, asking slightly different questions at slightly different times of the same community. And that can sometimes add to the confusion. So um, without putting anybody on the spot, I, I know that, that Claire has been working on through um, the Equality, Empowerment and Fairness agenda, uh, the idea of multidisciplinary locality teams and that sort of approach might help clarify um, and, and make that process a little bit more straightforward and understandable for staff and also for the communities that they support. Okay, thanks for that, Lee. Um, going back to uh, Davindi's question in the in, in the chat um, regarding the um, uh, transport poverty is a, a, a pressing issue, which is referred to um, in the, the climate change um, update paper. <laughs> Um, but I think the, the question that she's putting um, regarding the wipe not mentioning climate change um, at all, uh, and do we have a concern about that? And does that need to be um, addressed within the, 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 the next two weeks? Devindy, do you want to comment? Yeah, um, I think it's something that we've sort of raised previously, sort of sort of on that sort of as feedback, sort of waving the climate change flag just because of the linkage between climate change and inequalities. Um, and we'd raise whether it should be one of the sort of priorities of the LOIP. Um, and I think the initial feedback was that rather than being a priority, it should maybe be a golden thread or something that was sort of reflected through. Um, and I think it, the LOIP probably doesn't need to, to have, you know, a huge change, but it might be good if it is something that we're putting forward um, given the pressing nature of climate change, if it perhaps just gets a little bit of acknowledgement, um, or I would be in favour of it getting a little bit of acknowledgement, just as it does link to sort of future jobs, employability, health, vulnerability, it sort of, and it sort of the actions for climate change linked to the sort of transport poverty, food poverty, fuel poverty, um, all of that. So, it, um, and it is an issue that our communities have shown us that they do really care about. Um, so it seems I would be in I would it would seem incomplete um, if it to me if it didn't sort of mention climate change. Um, thanks for that, um, Devindi. I'm I'm kind of anxious that we don't just have a little bit of tokenistic mention of climate change um, in it. Um, but I'm also you know uh, conscious of the, the the point that you 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 do raise, um, and and I think if that's something that you can work out with uh, Lee and David. Um, over the next two weeks, then I think that would be um, a, a useful uh, revision to the, the, the strategic context. Um, Thomas, you've got your hand up. Uh, yeah, just um, thank you for the uh, the commitment run about the, uh, the the structures and the, the local engagement. That's really helpful. But my, my second po point probably kind of resonates with what Dabindi is just saying, and not specifically on climate change, but I wondered whether under the poverty work stream, um, we, we focus uh, quite rightly uh, on um, children, we focus on food poverty. Um, my question was just about rural uh, and older people uh, poverty. There's, there's nothing on page 29 specifically uh, in terms of stats unless I've, I've, I've missed it. Um, but I was also reminded just again to reinforce what Devindy was saying. I think it was the, uh, the head of the World Bank was saying um, yesterday that in terms of the, the current cost of living, uh, pressures they expected that, that would result in tens and possibly hundreds of millions of people across the globe um, moving into poverty um, because of the impact that the cost of living crisis is having and those those who are already in, in poverty are close to that so uh, but my question specifically was whether or not in terms of rural poverty which may relate to some of what Devindy was saying in terms of access to jobs, transport, etc., but also older people, um, where where there may be statistical information that helps support other actions. But I just don't know enough about that, if I'm honest. I'd one further comment, Peter, uh, if there was sure. any response to that. I can, I can yeah, thanks, uh, thanks, Councillor. Yeah, we'll have another look at that, um, Thomas. I mean, certainly when we went out with the priorities. Uh, those priorities for like for our to our rural local action partnerships uh, the, 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 they all they agreed with all of them but they say for the mental well-being they, they've talked a lot about social isolation for people and rural isolation and, and strengthening um 
that element so we can take and take another look at that because we know that is that is an issue and just going back to sorry what Davindi said about the um again the action plan and, and I mean again what we did with one of the action partnerships was almost sense check the actions against um climate change one of the actions we had in there was bulk buying for oil for the community and so we said well actually this is one it's you know it's quite expensive and environmentally it's awful you know why have you got that in that's possibly the worst fuel you could use so so kind of looking at some of the actions with that lens would help and again transport is is another one where um you know often it, it, it rather than transport per se it, it can be lack of local services or lack of local provisions and then people having to to, to move around to access that so um but yeah i think i think as we've said trying to run the climate change thing through and thinking about what does that mean for for um you know people who are struggling uh, and the added impacts would, would be helpful so certainly thomas within the the, the fuel poverty action plan 3.3 is identify localities and key demographics most at risk um, of of fuel poverty and um, so i mean i think it's you know, it's captured um, within the action plan, whether it's reflected um, within the strategic context uh, is, is something that um, they might want to consider as they come to the final, final draft. So, um, clear. Sorry, or Thomas, have you got your final point to raise? Yeah, my, my final comment wasn't about poverty, but I'll, I'll, I'll make it just now, Peter, if that's OK. And it was in relation to physical and mental well-being. Uh, and it's maybe just uh, partly because of other conversations over the last week or two, uh, but I just wondered whether or not in terms of suicide, uh, self-harm, young people's well-being, whether it was something that we um, could be strengthening around about that. I, I, I know certainly Sheena in conversations I've had with her more generally just about challenges with young people from crisis through a very early preventative engagement around about young people's uh, mental health and well-being. There's a lot of work going on within education with colleagues and uh, children's services, but, but I just wondered whether there was a specific uh, action there in terms of the partnership working along that. And I know there have been additional resources committed in terms of suicide prevention, but uh, it was just an area I thought merited some some focus. That's my call. Thanks. Thank you, Peter. Yeah, I think, I think Lee might have a, a, a bit of an answer to that as well. So. <clears throat> yeah, it's a, a, a topic that was uh, first raised uh, and suggested as a priority by colleagues in Police Scotland. So I had a couple of follow-up conversations with them um, and we're aware that there are two new members of staff that have recently joined, one working in ECS and one working in the Health and Social Care Partnership with a particular focus on this and we're keen to work with them. So we want to second guess what the output of that would be, but certainly it's something that um, has uh, come up the, the priority list quite significantly over the last couple of years and something we definitely want to give attention to. Hey, thanks for that, Lee. Um, Claire, I think your hand's been up longest. Yeah, and I think just going back on a couple of points there, the point that Davindi and then Thomas picked up in terms of um, rural transport and the challenges around and about that and then rural poverty more generally. So I think picking up on um, the point that you picked up on on 3.3, we could expand that a little bit just in terms of, I think, the overall look at rural poverty and transport absolutely is linked within that. And we have got a number of actions that we're undertaking so we can look and see what else we've got if we want to bring that over into this plan. So. Um, I think both of those were sort of yeah good points. Thanks for that, Claire. You can see that Murray has now joined us. Welcome to the meeting, Murray. Good morning. <laughs> Better late than never, Peter. Um, so I can only give my apologies. My uh, I seem to be doing emails quite happily at nine o'clock this morning. Then when I came back into this meeting, completely unable to get a connection. Um, however, it seems to have resolved itself because it wasn't really anything of my doing that's resolved it. I have to say. So, but Peter, given that you are aware of where we are in the meeting, I'm quite happy for you to carry on just before you offer the role to me. <laughs> well, I think we're, we're, we're still on the, the local outcome and improvement plan, Murray. Um, so okay. I, I think you can, we can go through that and I'm happy to pass on to you for the rest of the agenda, if you so wish. Um, but Emma, you, you, you wanted to come in. Yeah, I mean, echoing uh, many of the discussions that have gone already, I mean, 
in terms of the public health um, impact and the, the drivers of the early loss of life and morbidity at the moment, unfortunately, across Scotland, and then including part of the process for mental health substance use with the longer term threat of, of sustainability and climate change. But I mean, I think the LOIP is really good in, in focusing at, um, action and activity around the, the, many of the upstream drivers of, of those impacts. Um, I think the thing that I would just reflect, and I know I've, I've kind of commented on this before, um, it, it is the critical role of the Health and Social Care Partnership in, in, in delivering this with us. Um, and I, I see that they are referenced in the, the LOIP. I, I think my only slight hesitation is, and it might just be me reading the documentation, but they're not ref the Health and Social Care Partnership. And apologies if there's someone from Health and Social Care Partnership on the call, but I haven't been able to identify anyone. But they don't also seem to be on the, 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 the front cover of, of the agenda. So I, I don't know if we're struggling to identify a representative or, or what's happened around that. Um, but we, we definitely need them around the table in these discussions also. B. Thanks, Bill. I've got a quick uh, response on that one, Emma. Yeah, we have. Um, Health and Social Care have two officers now that sitting on the Executive Officer Group and um, we've asked that uh, Jackie Pepper, who's um, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, is our interim lead for the Health and Social Care Partnership, is added to the mailing list for future meetings. And um, so hopefully that will have that covered. Thanks. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks for, for, for that, Lee. Um, scrolling back up the chat, um, Yvonne, you asked a question. Um, regarding the employability service and the uh, estates property rationalisation. I did, but thank you. Barbara's come in and answered in the chat. So it was really just to make sure that that intent and ambition from the LEP to have a um, aligned and, and co-delivered service almost centre um, in Perth and Kinross that is considered within the estate's rationalisation. So that's been really helpful for Barbara to, to clarify that. Thank you. Hey, thanks for that, Yvonne. Is there anybody who's added to the chat or wishes to ask uh, uh, any further comments or questions? No. OK. Dave Lee, have you managed to capture the comments that were made? Have you had a sufficient steer regarding the questions that you, 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 you posed or is there anything that you're looking for further clarification on? Um, well, we are still looking for, for input um, before the 6th of May in okay. terms of the resourcing and uh, are people happy with the actions? Are there additional actions? If there is you know, narrative and people have got data, which we is more to date than what's in there, then, then please send us that. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the window is still open uh, and we, we welcome all, all input and comment on that. And I know Lee did a power of work a couple of days back going through the actions and contacting partners and, and asking a few questions. So that, that okay. uh, you know, responses to that will be most welcome. Okay. Thanks very much for that. Murray, do you want to take over for the? <laughs> yep, OK then, Peter, if that's that's lined up. Yeah, and, and just to um, reiterate what David said there, that there is still an opportunity to respond um, before the 6th of May, and, and I'm aware uh, from previous conversations that <clears throat> there has been more input from some organisations rather than others. So it was just, it's an opportunity for you all to reflect those who haven't responded and, and get your response in before the 6th of May. Thank you. So <clears throat> we'll now move on to the next item, which is item five, which is the climate emergency update. Um, and I'm Oh, I think it's Peter Marshall who's coming in on this one, although I don't have a, unfortunately, all of my, uh, it's Divindi, I see, <laughs> on the screen. So yeah, I don't have all, all uh, I don't have an agenda in front of me, but I'm keep working on. Anyway, okay, Divindi. Okay, um, so just a brief update. We had the first meeting of the climate change working or a subgroup of the CPP um, about two weeks ago um, and we had sort of generally good attendance and there was sort of a strong commitment from those on board to sort of work together on climate change. Um, 
it was sort of agreed at the next meeting, which will be happen in early May, we're going to do that sort of detailed combing of the LOIP from a sort of climate lens with sort of the different um, members all looking at it um, from a climate point of view beforehand. Um, and we've agreed sort of a number of areas where we thought it would be useful to sort of work together. Um, these include buildings and decarbonization of estates, fleet transition, governance, training, and procedures and soft skills, approach and messaging, sort of how we're serving our customers and employees, and also the sort of vulnerability and sort of reactive response angle. Um, the group sort of agreed we're gonna meet monthly. Um, and um, I think <laughs> just in terms of the ask for the group, um, we've just sort of, the only actions were to sort of note, note the working group update. Um, and if your organization has yet to nominate somebody to the CPP climate change working group, um, to please send through a nomination to myself and I'll get them added to the next meeting. Um, okay, thank you. Are there any questions um, from colleagues? I'm afraid um, the way things are going this morning. My screen's actually disappeared on me at the moment. Murray, the only question Peter, I, I had, and it's Peter, it's do you mind taking the meeting again? I've lost all the camera. I can't see what's going on in the screen at all anywhere. So my okay. apologies. But Peter, I'll hand back to you. I, I thought I'd managed to offload a hospital pass onto you there, <laughs> Murray, but uh, sadly not. Yeah, so, right. yeah. uh, the, 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 the question I had, or it's it's more the, 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 the challenge is that, you know, um, the, the Community Planning Partnership agreed in December uh, to seek um, representatives for, uh, for 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 the working group, and we're now kind of four months later, um, and and are still scratching around. Um, I don't know um, who the, uh, the 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 organisations are that don't uh, yet uh, have haven't yet as yet nominated somebody, but we really do need to uh, to, to to get to grips with this, you know, or uh, move on with, with without them and 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 find, you know. Um, uh, a coalition uh, of the willing in terms of the the the, the working group. Um, what more can we do in order to fill these places um, with a sense of urgency? I mean, I think we have in general, we have almost all of the organizations represented. Okay. There's only a couple um, who have yet to um, who have yet to sort of nominate somebody. Um, I don't, I don't sort of I don't necessarily want to sort of name and shame them, but I don't know if maybe after the meeting we should um, send them a sort of follow up or just sort of direct follow up um, to try and get somebody nominated. Okay, I'm 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 not into uh, na naming and shaming, but I think if it's if it's an issue that needs to be you know escalated um, in order to get a a, a response from a, a higher level in those organisations, um, then can I leave that in your hands to? To, to to do that because I think you know time is marching on and 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 four months is too long to to, to fill these spots for something so important. So, okay. are there any questions for Davindi on the on the update? Emma, I think you've got your hand up. Sorry. Well, I, I would just reflect that I would see no issue in including in reports such as these the the membership of the working group that you have achieved to date because I think that is useful to know about connections across. Um, and I don't. I, I, I think that gives obvious clarity and assurance of the work progressing. So I would be supportive of that going forward. Thomas, I think you've got an immediate reaction to that. Yeah, I don't disagree with Emma's comments at all. Uh, and I think if we, if we can get the work up and running and people start to see the value of what it's doing, then that in itself would be the best encouragement for people to get involved if they actually start to see that it's doing something that adds value. Thanks for that. Lee. Thank you, Peter. Yeah, I was uh, a couple of quick points. First, um, having attended the first meeting of the working group, I'm pretty content that the, the organisations who need to be there and have representation there are there and we're committed. And we had a, a useful conversation at the, at the one meeting that we've had so far. And um, the second point was really just the same kind of following up on, on what was said about the like previously. The key focus that we've asked the working group to have initially is the like document to ensure that the actions in there reflect the potential impact or um, exacerbation effect that climate change may have on some of those issues of inequality. So um, I would like I would like to think that come June we will have 
um, more uh, in there, which directly reflects the impact of climate change. We've just only had the one meeting so far, uh, so very much a work in progress. OK, thank you for that, Lee. Are there any other comments or questions on the on the report? OK, can we note the update from the working group and seek the nominations of those out, out, outstanding and escalate if required. So thank you. So I'm just scrolling back up to, to, to my agenda. The next items on the agenda are the um, emerging, emerging strategic issues um, 6.1 violence uh, and aggression against women and girls. Are there, is there anybody speaking to the first item, Lee? Yeah, thanks, Peter. It was just um, both of these are very short updates to say that um, Violence and aggression against women and girls topic was requested by colleagues at PCAFs and, and other partners in the third sector. And we had a, a very a detailed conversation about that at the executive officer group meeting earlier this month. And the agreement was that um, Laurie Hughes, who's uh, interim chief at PCAVs, would come back to the meeting in June with uh, a, a proposal or a series of asks of the board on that particular agenda. And linked to that um, that kind of conversation at the executive officer group also then led on to a conversation around hate crime and concerns around uh, an increase in, in hate crime issues in Perth and Kinross. And uh, Graham uh, Binney from, from Police Scotland uh, had agreed to bring an update to board again in June on that particular topic. And there's, there may be op option or opportunities for those two to be considered together because there may well be some shared issues um, uh, amongst them. I know Laurie is on the call and I think yeah. Graham is also on the call. They may wish to add more to that. OK, Laurie, is there anything you want to add to that? Um, morning, everybody. Um, yeah, no, sorry, my, the quality of my camera is really poor today. Um, I have uh, liaised with Graham. I've actually been in touch with Graham, so um, Myself and uh, my colleagues from RASAC and Women's Aid are having a conversation about what that paper, what will the details of that paper, and then the plan is that I will also have a conversation with Graham and see if there's any recurring and consistent messages across the two to see if there's any clear links. And then, as Lee has indicated, we will bring a paper for uh, for board in June with some direct asks. Thank you for that, Laurie. Graham, you want to come in on that? Well, thanks, Councillor Barrett. Not much to add. Laurie's articulated that uh, exactly the way I would have. I think the important bit is for, uh, you know, we can provide certain data, but this probably needs to be enhanced by the information Laurie and and agencies such as ours can access things that we, that are concerning communities that that may not be obvious to to likes of the police. So I think that that's an important bit of work we need to do in just to. Uh, learn from each other to see if there's any um, additional work and and uh, and priorities we need to identify. Okay. Uh, thanks for that for for that, Graham. Are there any comments that we want to have on that? No, but well, we'll look forward to that at the at the the, the June meeting then. Um, in terms of um, any other competent business, um, we've got. Uh, a verbal update from Kenny Ogilvie on asylum seekers and refugees. There hasn't been any other uh, competent uh, business uh, in intimated, uh, but if anybody has any, we can take that after uh, Kenny's verbal update. So, uh, I, I'll be doing my uh, Kenny Ogilvie impression. Impersonation, right? Okay. We'll see if anybody spots. Um, yeah, I've, I've got a note uh, from from Kenny that I can go through, and and, and Claire uh, and Laurie may wish to. Um, contribute um, as well. And again, this is a, another um, situation which which it changes quite um, quickly. So I think uh, probably as, as people know, we've had a number of um, asylum seekers in the station hotel, I think um, in the region of 66, uh, so a maximum of, of, of 70. Um, and they are, have been single uh, single males uh, from a, quite a variety, wide variety of countries. I've uh, been in the station hotel since November. Uh, and from uh, Iran, Iraq, uh, Vietnam, Somalia, Eritrea, Ethiopia, Pakistan, Sierra Leone, 
um, Sudan, Syria, and Yemen. So uh, a, a, a big, uh, big range there. As as folk will possibly know, um, asylum seekers um, do not have recourse to any uh, public funds um, and cannot work. Um, they, they do receive um, payment at eight pound a week um, payment that they're eligible for. Um, Health and Social Care have been um, the lead agency uh, and have carried out um, health assessments and health checks and there's been quite a lot of significant um, wraparound support, if you like, put in for, for, to support those individuals and a lot of that from um, from third sector groups as well as from um, council um, services. So we've had things, uh, language cafes have been run by PCAVs, um, Perth College have been providing um, ESOL support. Uh, library cards have been provided by CPK. Um, we've had uh, gym membership by uh, Live Active Leisure. Uh, the bike station provided um, bikes and, and equipment. And um, Scott Street uh, has opened up to um, just let people play a bit of pool and get on the playstations, et cetera, and, and just do a bit, of, a bit of mixing, if you like. Um, so in a, in addition to that, you'll you'll probably know that the Queen's Hotel was also identified as the second um, hotel uh, to take asylum seekers, which is just across the road uh, from Station Hotel, and that was going to be uh, 47, up to 47 people, again single males uh, from from different areas. But you'll have seen that during the last few weeks, the Station Hotel um, has been sold. A notice um, has been given, so the the um, the asylum seekers there are going to be. Um, it's like they will be moved out from Perth and Kinross, possibly heading uh, towards Edinburgh. So it does um, reduce, if you like, the the numbers and and what was looking to be fair, quite a bit of service pressure around that on our third sector agencies and ourselves. And uh, bear in mind, we also have uh, numbers of Ukrainian. Um, refugees who obviously have a different legal status um, and, and can work and can access services, but uh, uh, you know numbers of Ukrainian refugees coming into Perth and Kinross as well who will also be needing um, support. So yeah, it's a kind of changing picture, but that's um, that's where we are now. I don't know, Laurie or Claire, would you like to add anything to that? Um, yeah, I can add something. Uh, so this week, the, the, the plan was that the guys were going to Bathgate. All 66 were going to be going in a hotel to Bathgate. That has been pulled this week. So we are currently not sure where the 66 have to go. Um, my understanding that there is, has been a short extension request asked of the Queen's for an additional week, which may enable... Um, there's, there's hotel provision that's opening up in... Bothwell, but there's also another site likely in Greenock, which are still in the kind of developmental stages, but would give another week for Mears and the Home Office to try to get those over the line. But as it currently stands, we don't know where the guys are, are going, which has caused a bit of discomfort and anxiety, obviously, with everything that's happened in the press recently around Rwanda. Um, there has been, I can't tell, uh, Wednesday afternoon, I ended up spending my whole, my whole afternoon in the Queen's because um, the guys needed an awful lot of awful lot of reassurance that's when the the news about Bathgate had broke that that had fallen through and so the, the concerns were that they genuinely were going to be being sent to Rwanda which was horrific and, and harrowing to have to kind of to negotiate and um, but the guys in the Queen's they're 43 I think in the Queen's currently I believe there's still four four spaces in the Queen's um they're they're in they're settled so we're doing our best to kind of get the support the same level of support in there as what we've done in the station um, but as as you've said, David, it's a very fluid and fluctuating situation and we just kind of have to take each day as it comes. Obviously, it's Ramadan just now at the moment, so it's all a bit, it's really shocking, shocking timing for this, for this all to happen. Um, but that's that's where we are. Laurie, thanks for, for, for that. Um, I would um, like to uh, commend all the organisations um, and, and the response led by the Health and Social Care Partnership. I think um, the, 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 the lengths to which um, the third party, uh, third sector um, organisations, PCAVs, um, Culture Perth and Kinross, Live Active Leisure, um, the, the, the police, um, housing, community safety, it has been, uh, I, I think, you know, a, an excellent example of um, integrated support 
uh, being implemented on the ground very swiftly and again with a lot of public support as well. I know that you know PCAV's appeal for uh, clothing um, was you know gained a, a, a huge and generous um, re re response. Um, and you know for 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 a group of 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 men who were you know particularly vulnerable, as David said, you know I, on allowances of seven or eight pounds a a, a week. And in the the location where they were they, they were situated could have been you know potentially open to to exploitation uh, as a as a, a a a very vulnerable group uh, and I think it's to the credit of everybody involved um, that that has been um, a, a avoided and I think you know the the involvement of um, saints in the in the community and 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 the bike station uh, uh, has has also you know meant that there's been you know activities uh, and. Uh, and Perth College as well. Um, I, I think it has just been a, an excellent um, example, and I did wonder whether we were being victims of our success um, with uh, Mears looking for, for 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 more hotel accommodation, which, to be frank, uh, is not ideal in any way, shape, or or or, or form uh, compared to uh, uh, you know proper 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 housing. Uh, and 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 I think the Rwanda thing you know must have just been uh, a, an appalling prospect for 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 people uh, waiting to have their uh, their refugee um, or uh, asylum status con con confirmed. So uh, I really just want to thank everybody who's been in, been involved. Where did you want to come in there? Um, no. Thank you, Councillor Barrett. No, you, I think you pretty much have just said exactly what I was going to say in terms of I think it has been an absolutely fantastic response here in Perth and Kinross um, from across the community planning partners and I think that that absolutely has been recognised. I've sat in on a couple of meetings with COSLA and with colleagues across other local authorities and I do think that exactly as you've just articulated. I think the, the support, the response, the welcome here in Perth and Kinross has been exceptional and I think huge credit to everybody because, you know, it has been a huge amount of work and, you know, from colleagues across uh, all different sectors and organisations. So it has been exceptionally good and, you know, I think really heartening to see such a welcome. Thanks for that, Claire. Um, I think we can we can note that um, update on behalf of um, Kenny David. So thank you for that. Um, are there any other items uh, of competent business? Claire, is that you putting your hand up? Yeah, I just wondered if you wanted me to give you a brief update in terms of the Homes for Ukraine scheme and activity, whether that would be of value along, you know, dovetails quite nicely with that last update there. Yes, please. That would be helpful. So just sort of very briefly, I think, for everybody's information, uh, you will be aware that obviously, again, another, you know, excellent multi multi agency, multi partnership, uh, cross partnership working group has been established to obviously welcome families from Ukraine. Uh, we are receiving daily updates from the Scottish Government on matches and visas. We've had a small number of arrivals, so a small number of uh, families and households have already arrived, um, ranging from single parents with a couple of children to uh, single people. We've enrolled three children in schools so far. Uh, currently have got data on uh, a potential 179 guests. Um, that's people, not households, uh, across 64 sponsors and properties. Um, the teams are working very, very closely with all of the, uh, the sponsors undertaking the property checks, ensuring that we've got the disclosure checks in place, and then obviously the wraparound support when it will be needed in terms of uh, translation services, health uh, access, any kind of benefits uh, requirements and whatnot. So all of that work is underway. Uh, comprehensive web, pa web page is in place. Um, we've got a number of our own properties that we've got ready for matching. They're currently sitting with um, COSLA as part of the super sponsor scheme. And I think there's been really, really good multi-agency work again uh, here with fantastic engagement with local community groups in Highland, Perthshire, Cooper Angus, Strathmore, uh, Strathern and so on. So a number of um, groups and we've received some very, very positive feedback on the approach, the level of information uh, from communities, the third sector and indeed the Scottish Government to the extent that one of our colleagues 
uh, Elaine Ritchie, who has been sort of leading up much of this work, uh, attended the Scottish Parliament yesterday at their External Affairs and Culture Committee to give evidence around and about the approach uh, here in Perth and Kinross, and that was very positively received as well. So some really good work uh, underway. So just again, another thanks to everybody for all of their teams and everybody's involvement and support. Claire, thanks um, very much for that. Um, There, there is, I think, a deep sense of frustration um, in the community um, from people who are, you know, offering accommodation uh, for through through the uh, Homes for Ukraine scheme, um, simply um, not having their 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 interest responded to. Um, it's taking, you know, referrals to the to, to to our local MPs to get, you know, any sort of response to, uh, to, to 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 those people who are, you know, w wanting to participate and certainly listening on the radio uh, to. To, um, members of the Highland Perthshire uh, group yesterday, there was a sort of deep sense of frustration there in terms of you know people who um, they, they they've been in touch with you know they're, they're providing the accommodation for uh, and and their their um, you know uh, visa um, applications um, are are being delayed, uh, uh, running out of money in, in in while 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 they're in Czechoslovakia or or the Czech Republic, I should say. Um, and and I, and I just wonder because I think the 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 the, the one. The, the website is very comprehensive, um, but you know, is, is there something more that we can do in terms of working with our our MPs uh, to, to 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 try and address those those delays? Yeah, I mean, I think that is a good point. I think I think we're obviously aware of all of this, of the the frustrations with the delays. What we are seeing now, and you. you you can see we've got a small number. We understand that that is is stepping up. As I say, we've got 100, 179 uh, across 64 sponsors that we look like we're just about there and sort of ready to move. So things over the last few days and into next week look like they are picking up. Uh, yeah, absolutely. We're very plugged into the, the Scottish Government and the COSLA Working Group, um, you know, at, at a national level. And I think these the, the feedback is going through uh, in that respect. So uh, I think we've No, I think Claire's frozen there. Okay. <coughs> Sorry, Murray, were you wanting to come in? No, I wasn't. I, I was um, no, I, um, not not particularly. I was just um, acknowledging the frustrations that Claire probably has just now that I've had all morning um, with my connection. <laughs> did I just get cut off there? You did. You did. Yeah. It's full yeah. flow. Yeah. Having and, a and rant. It, <laughs> it, it wasn't me muting you. Yeah. So. <laughs> Thanks okay. for that. Um, so yeah, either... so we're we're moving forward. I would say things are moving, and we've got quite a lot of accommodation checks um, teed up for next week. So things are really starting to move uh, as we go now. Thanks for that, Claire. Does anyone else have a, any other items of competent business? Just no. finally, Peter, if I may, absolutely. I'm assuming my connection will, will hold up. I just. Um, as this is my final meeting of the community community planning partnership i'd just like to thank everyone for their participation over the years i think um with the the crises that are before us with um, those from far off lands put it that way from ukraine to to <coughs> afghanistan pakistan somalia etc it really highlights the role of the community planning partnership and the work we, that we can do and I think Claire has, has done an excellent job of highlighting that uh, just now. And also I'd like to thank Laurie for stepping up in really difficult stand, sort of circumstances um, in PCAVs and the excellent work. And thank her really for the excellent work that she's done, because I know it's been very challenging. Um, so with that, I'd just like to thank you all for uh, all the best and, and hopefully encourage everyone to fully participate in the planning partnership going forward, because I think it is really important and it can make a real difference. Thank you very much. And can I also add my thanks and, and just say that I hope to join you at the next meeting on the 24th of June, but that's still to be determined. So thanks very much, everyone. Thanks, folks. Thank you. Thank you.